hi guys okay hi adbc hi everyone so in case you are new here and you don't know what this live is about um today i'm going to be speaking with breeding international consultancy so it's a consultancy group basically they deal with immigration services for foreigners here in russia and we are going to be talking about how to get your resident permit as a foreigner here in russia so regardless of your nationality regardless of um let's see how many years you've spent here i know that matters okay but regardless of where you are even if you are in your bachelor's master's you are here you know to start a family and you know all that good stuff today we are going to be talking about everything so in about two minutes i'm going to invite daniel olarewaju so daniel is the leading specialist for the international department of breedings international so is the one in charge of dealing with international clients so for foreign clients like me and you i'm really interested in you know today's session because this is something that i believe is on almost everybody's mind i mean if you're a foreigner here you definitely start thinking of probably getting a pr you know what actually does it entail what does it look like and you know all that good stuff so yeah that's what i'm going to be talking about today also this session is going to be recorded so you get a replay just in case you're not able to make the live or you had to leave at some point you'd be able to um go back and get your answers you know get your answers to the questions that you have also i asked that a couple of you sorry i said a couple of you i asked that um people should drop their questions okay for um any questions they have regarding permanent residency you know legalizing your immigration status here in russia and i received a couple as well so yeah okay Hi, Daniel. Yeah, hi. Hello, Joyce. How are you? I'm good. Can you hear me, Kelly? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. So, Daniel, can you introduce yourself briefly? Okay. So, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Temidayo Daniel Onarewaju, and um, I'm a specialist in breeding consulting law firm. So, basically, I'm the Department of International Department. So, I handle the African clients for them uh, and all right a bit dazzled okay, so can you give us a brief about breeding okay in breeding consulting breeding consulting is a russian law firm we deal right. with business like if you want to establish business in russia and we also give um legal support for foreigners for maybe immigration purpose if they are willing to get a residence permit they mm -hmm. want to relocate to russia with their family so basically, anything about civil law, we deal with them in Russia, in breeding consulting. <clears throat> That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just go straight into the questions that I've received and the questions that I believe you know, most people would have concerning um, immigration or legalizing, sorry, legalizing their you know, immigration status here in Russia. So the first question I received says, one second, I just want to access that. Okay, so this person asked, how quickly after entering the Russia Federation can I apply for a residence permit? Also, what are the requirements? So basically, I think this is a good way to start. What exactly. are the requirements, you know, to actually apply for a permanent resident permit? Permanent okay. resident permit. Yeah. All right. So, um, you see, in Russia, when you're dealing with the immigration situation in Russia, the most important thing is your legal ground. Okay. You know, what are you coming to do in Russia? Because this is what we are going to use to get a document. You can't just say you're coming to Russia for nothing. You must have a reason for coming to Russia. So uh, if, you, if you actually come to Russia maybe as a student, uh, you must have lived for like two, three years before okay. applying. Yeah. Okay. And basically for students now, if students actually graduate with a red diploma, I mean with okay. honor, they can yeah. they are automatically eligible to obtain a permanent residence permit in russia mm -hmm. so if you are coming to russia your legal ground determines what document you will have 
Do you understand now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what are the other requirements? If you're, let's say, your legal ground, I'm going to be posting and pinning question and answers rather. Yeah, sure. Questions. So yeah, for your PR, you must have lived for about two to three years in Russia before you even go about that. So I think this answers this person's question saying, how soon can I start, you know, processing my permanent residency, you know, after my entrance into Russia? So the answer is two to three years. You must have lived yeah. for two to three years. Um, so that that's two to three years is those the maximum you know oh, for yeah. you to be sure that if you apply they will not uh reject your reject application you. uh -huh. yeah mm -hmm. maybe if you come to russia now in less than one in less than a year you're already applying mm -hmm. for permanent residence permit they might reject it but if yeah. you have lived for like two three years definitely you can just apply mm -hmm. yeah all right um so the next question says can a master's student apply for PR after graduation in Russia? Yes, definitely. But it depends on the uh, student's results. Okay. Like I said earlier, like I said earlier, if a student actually graduated with a red diploma, like with honor, known as red diploma in Russia, yeah. such student, according to the new law now, is fully eligible to obtain permanent residence permits right mm -hmm. away in a very sim simplified manner. The only thing, the, the only major re re requirement is that such student needs um, a good uh, legal partners. I mean, a good law firm to handle his documents, mm -hmm. you know, for mm -hmm. submission in Sakharova because things are very complicated there. Yeah, that's yeah. Moscow, by the way. <laughs> for yeah. people that don't know where he's talking about, that's the Moscow. So, so another uh, question I would like to ask is, um, do you think that the process to obtain your permanent residency, you know, um, it depends on what area you are in Russia. Okay, so for example, let's say you're staying in the north, you think it's going to be easier for you to obtain it than if you're staying in the center here. Okay, um, if I'm to comment about that, <laughs> though your, your regions actually determines um, the probability of having the documents. Okay. And to, to complete my answer to that, your first question about master students obtaining residence permits. Um, master students without red diploma can also apply for temporary residence permits through quota. How about the you bachelors? Know? So like bachelor, bachelors without... The same thing. Yes, yes. Same thing? The, okay. the same thing applies to bachelors too. If you have completed your education in Russia, you know, and you have some basic knowledge of Russian language, you can apply for quota. So when you have this quota, then you cannot apply for temporary residence permits. But mm -hmm. if you have graduated and you have a red diploma, I mean, you graduated with honor. So you are fully eligible for this permanent residence mm -hmm. in Russia. You, so talking about um, regions, the influence of uh, uh, being in different regions in yeah. Russia. Okay. For instance, now, quota. If you are applying for quota in Moscow, it will be way difficult. Like it will be very difficult. But yeah. if you're if you're applying for quota in some less developed states in Russia, like Arkhangelsk, <laughs> like yeah, in the north, Saratov, Tambov, yeah. all those little little cities, yeah, you will have um um some you know privilege to actually have it there because the quota assigned to Moscow, I think every year is around two thousand and forty. Mm -hmm. 2040 and before the quota even arrived they've already you know taking it yeah applicants are already queuing up for it yeah, yeah yeah so basically that's it regions actually determines um the sources of having the document all right guys um please if you like to ask a question i would advise that you drop it in the question box so that it doesn't get missing in the chat because i can see someone asked the question already but before we go to this question I, I think we should have done this first. So, like, what actually does a temporary residence permit and a permanent residency permit, like, um, gives you? What's, um, what's the word? What's the advantage, you know, one? Or what can you do with it? What does it <clears throat> offer you? Yes, that's the word. What does yeah. a temporary residence permit and a um, permanent residence permit, you know, offer, offer you here as a foreigner in Russia? So, you can start okay. with TRP and then we'll go to PR. Yeah. So, um... Talking about firstly the temporary residence permits, uh, we must actually understand the difference between yeah. all these documents. 
Yeah. Temporary residence permits is just like uh, three years uh, legality in Russia. You know, okay. they give you three years to. It's just valid for like three years, basically. Yeah. So um, and the, the the major difference why it is different from business visa then, because okay, business or visa, visa maybe. or student visa is that this temporary residence permit is the very first stage of having citizenship in Russia. Okay. Because if you have this um, temporary residence permit, after living with it for like eight months, mm -hmm. you can you can immediately proceed to obtain your permanent Red, residence you, permit. I see your, your PR, your PR. Yeah, yeah, I know what you want to say, VNJ. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so um, after living with it for like eight months, you can just go apply for it for mm -hmm. the permanent residence permit. Mm -hmm. So before, at least, if you're, you 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 are given like three years to you know with it, and after eight months you can apply for it, and before before let's say at the end of five months, fifth months of application, you you can actually have the uh, okay. permanent residence permit. Yeah. So um, the advantage of this temporary residence permit is like you have the semi provisions of of being a citizen, citizen. in Russia. Yeah. Like you will have access to some um, like basic I, I think, services, um, health insurance. You get free health insurance. Yeah, of course. I I will still you know read the. Okay. You have your medical insurance. Those are the things I mean by good services through Gosu Sloge. Yeah. You know. Do you do you know about this Gosu Sloge? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are a lot of restrictions there, but if you have the temporary residence permit or citizenship. Mm -hmm. You will have access mm -hmm. to almost all of these things, mm -hmm. you know, like um, exiting and uh, coming into Russia without visa. You don't mm -hmm. have to uh, uh, extend visa or, or bother yeah, about yeah. anything again. Mm -hmm. So basically, the, the advantages are quite, you know, a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. a lot of advantages to it. So what's the major difference between TRP, that's temporary resident permit, and permanent resident permit? Okay, TRP, the temporary residence permit, is just a stamp on your passport. Okay. Maybe, yeah, if you're in Nigeria now, if you're in Nigeria, you only have the stamp on your passport with the validity there. Yeah, but three years validity. The, yeah, we, but the permanent residence permit is a blue passport. It's in form of a booklet. Okay. Yeah, but there are two types to it. There, there is one that you can use for the rest of your life. If you like, you can apply for oh. the citizenship. If you like, you may not apply for it. Right? Okay. There are some that you may not, you just have to use for like three years. And you have though to be applied. Is, though, yeah, though it is permanent, but you can be extending it. Renewing it. Yeah. So um, this, the one that you can actually be uh, renewing every three years mm -hmm. is the one that you actually obtain through HQS, which is which means um, a highly qualified specialist. Okay, okay. Yeah, like if you have a, a company here and uh, you are one of the financial director of that company and with some good uh, and reasonable capital and mm -hmm. your your wages or salary is up to like maybe 165,000 rubles okay. every month, yeah, you can apply for this HQS. So automatically you will have your permanent residence parents mm. in Russia, yeah. But if you're applying by marriage, by marriage, you'll be given a booklet that you can live with for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one more thing to always take notes when you have this document is that uh, it is very important to give reports. They call it notification to the immigration authority every six months. Okay. Yeah. And another thing, yeah. And another thing is that if you are, um, if you have a temporary residence permit, you mm -hmm. must not stay out of Russia for more than six months. Okay. But if there is any, <laughs> yeah. But you must not stay any, out of Russia for more than six months. Yeah, but if there is any case, maybe situation that you know warrants you to stay out of Russia for more mm -hmm. than six months, you must report to the embassy, to Russian embassy in that your country, country. where you are currently secret. Yeah, where you are currently located. So. It is very important to give annual reports. Okay. Uh, okay. How about if you status. have if you have that um the second type when you spoke about the one that doesn't need renewal, do you still have to give reports after every six months? Yes, you have to give report. Ah, okay. The the reports will actually stop until you obtain your citizenship. 
Wow, okay. Until you, on, until you have the residence permit. Okay. So yeah. please, can you clarify this? I heard or I overheard that when you have a temporary resident permit, you can't um, live or work in a different city from where you have the permit, where you obtain the permit, rather. That it, worked on like, it works on like a registration um, you know, system, kind of. Well, uh, if you have residence permits, be it temporary or permanent, you can work anywhere in Russia. Oh. Yeah, you can work anywhere in Russia, and you can be registered to anywhere in Russia. You know, just immigration registration to notify them that you are currently living here. So, and even now, a student with just a visa can be officially employed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, so, so if if you've you, heard it, you can be employed with a student visa as well. Yeah, officially. You don't have to maybe work unofficial. If you have okay. a temporary or permanent residence permit, you can work anywhere in Russia. There is no mm -hmm. restriction. So far, the okay. jurisdiction is Russia. So you okay. can work anywhere. Yeah. So it means someone can, let's see, I don't know, I keep using Akanges because I just moved to Moscow. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm saying like, so if, let's say I got, I assuming like um, I have therapy from Arkhangesk, I have no problem living here in Moscow. You don't have a problem living in Moscow. Yeah. All right. So far that you are registered in that mm -hmm. place. Yeah. All right. All right. So let me move on. Okay, so this person asked how to move when you don't want to be a student. So basically, you want to come to Russia, okay? You want to okay. be legal. You're on legal yeah. grounds, but you don't want to be a student. <clears throat> you don't have any Russian relative, okay? Mm -hmm. But you want to visit and you kind of need, okay, oh, you need a tourist visa as an EU citizen, something like that. I really did not get the question, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh... If, Okay, if I can ask you... So basically, I think how to come to Russia on legal grounds without being a student. Without being a student, of course. There are ways to come to Russia without being what a student. What are the options? Yeah, other options is maybe through a private invita invitation. Okay. You know, or through a business visa. Okay. Or through a tourist visa. But right now, they are not issuing tourist visa anymore because okay. of COVID restrictions. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so right now, are... actually, how can you come into Russia right now? Well, right now, if you want to come into Russia now, the the most valid and possible way is through student student visa. Yeah, even even business visa, there are a lot of restrictions on them. Mm. Yeah, but so we can take care of... basically for a cost or something. For you must to... be coming for a reason, like what I said earlier. You must have a reason. For coming mm. to Russia, your your purpose must be well outlined. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you must have a reason for coming in, into Russia, and basically, you can also come as a special person, maybe having the status of that HQS now. Okay, highly qualified specialist. Highly qualified specialist, which means you have a business here, and you are you 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 must really show up, you know, to take care of your business in mm -hmm. Russia, or maybe coming as a celebrity or coming for medical purpose. <laughs> Everybody should be celebrities now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, these are the valid ways. But just saying, like, maybe you want to come to Russia as just normal person for tourism, no. Even shine. Ask, even... How about working visa? Yeah, working visa is also possible. Now, uh, the most... now? now, now it's not really possible, but it's Speaking. possible. Yeah, it depends on the. Uh, organization that is you know employing you employing, and okay. yeah and and the documents you are able to you know tender mm. so uh if you want to come into russia through students um, sorry working visa you can just contact us and we will be the one to facilitate the process with your employer so that oh, okay. there will no yeah so that there will not be any um limitations Mm -hmm. when you're entering russia because okay. entering russia or maybe your plane is landing in russia does not mean you've entered russia until you pass yes, the passport control. yes even as a student i yeah. i noticed that especially since the pandemic happened exactly. you there are a lot of rules now in place like your school so, has to do this do that <clears throat> let so, immigration uh, know and all yeah, that stuff. until until you pass the passport control you've not entered russia yeah and uh -huh. And uh, if you're coming through a true student, too, it's not all schools that are allowed to to accept really? students now. Yeah, not all schools. There Please, are can some, you shed more light on that? <laughs> yeah, there are some um, 
major schools that are allowed to bring in students. Okay. Yeah, but some other schools are now trying to use these major schools to accept students. Maybe after mm -hmm. arrival, mm -hmm. they relocate their students. Okay. And uh, one of the uh, uh, some of the authorized schools are uh, Ruden. Yeah, Ruden. Ruden. We have Midi. Uh, uh, we have Synergy. A lot, a lot of them like that. Like I mean, big schools, recognized big schools, schools. Yes, yeah. recognized schools. Yeah. That's, that that's... means most of, most of them are in like Moscow, Saint Petersburg, the bigger cities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, so, and the student must be quarantined before entering, you know, joining the society. Mm -hmm. At least mm -hmm. fourteen days. I think fourteen days. Yes. Yeah. So business visa is possible if you want. Mm -hmm. If you need a business visa, just contact us. Contact. Me. And yeah, and we we can help you out. That's very right. short. Yeah. So this next question says, if a PhD student has completed his PhD in a Russian university, how can he apply for permanent residency? Uh, like I said earlier, that is education. Okay. Yeah, and, and it depends on the um, results. I mean, the diploma that the person is holding. Though okay. PhD students don't really have maybe red or... Red or, diploma. Yeah, yeah. So if this person has something we call ordinatura, maybe a medical student now, the person can apply for it. Yeah. I'm doing that now. <laughs> so just try to finish with good grades. You can actually mm -hmm. apply for residence permits. So if you don't have a solid legal ground, maybe you don't have this red diploma or, or a very high grade, the best thing to do is to apply through quota. Okay. You know, this quota, the secret is that the more solid your legal, legal ground is yeah. uh, uh the more possibility it for is that you be yeah for you to have this document because the immigration commission they, they will have to see it and consider your situation in russia mm. let's say you have graduated in russia now you know unpaid uh, uh um education sure. <laughs> yeah and you graduated with maybe at least close to you know very diploma. good diploma. results very good results and you still have some other things that you are doing maybe you are employed but not officially mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. they will consider you and give you this thing because they know that if they give you, you an asset to them exactly like you have something you are doing in the country you will not just be a vagabond or just jobless yeah, you know, yeah. Big, big, because they have enough jobless citizens so mm -hmm. they won't really <laughs> Uh, grant that if you don't have a good legal ground. So what you want to do in the country really matters. Okay. Yeah. And if you're a PhD student, you want to apply, contact Breading Consulting. We will help you out. All right. So is it 100% guaranteed <laughs> that you would get your PR or your temporary residency? Um, on what ground, if I may ask? I mean, like, if you apply, what are the chances of, you know, um, getting well, it? How soon? Like, what's the process like, basically? Just a run through. Like, what's the process like? Okay, How many months? Process... What's the duration? What are the okay. documents? The other, mm -hmm, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, after the list of the documents needed for this PR, uh, some of the, the ones that I will really mention here now, like the most important one okay. is... Uh, your police clearance certificate okay. that shows that you don't have any criminal record and this will be sent from your home country okay like if you're a nigerian it must be it must be sent you know from nigeria you must receive it okay. from nigeria and um your bank statement okay. uh, how much your, should be in your bank statement sorry well uh the more money you have in your account the better for you but it should be a, it, it should be above like maybe two hundred thousand rubles. I mean, yeah. like as in, <laughs> when you are applying for TRP and as a student, do they expect you to have that much money? Well, they don't want to know if you're a student or or not. Oh, okay. At least you should have above two hundred thousand rubles mm. in your account. Yeah, okay. in your account. Yeah. Okay. So uh, your medical test report, you know, that shows okay. that you don't have any HIV or any infectious disease. And um, your medical report record also that shows that you are, you, you are not really addicted to any form drugs, of narcotics. Yeah, drugs. Rest. Exactly. So HIV. Yeah, yeah. So and also you, you need your 
passport, photograph, translated copy, and uh, your migration card. If you're applying through marriage, you need your marriage certificate. If you're applying through um, your red diploma, you need your red diploma too. You know, a lot of them notarize translation of your passport, like I said earlier. So, and another one of the uh, uh, important thing is that you must have a place okay. where you will be registered. That's a place of living. Yeah, a place to be registered. Maybe if you're really, if you're living in an apartment now, you must be registered in that apartment. If you're not the owner, your the owner of that apartment must accept. You know that you should be registered there permanently. Uh -huh. Yeah. So after having all these documents now, then we file the application and submit to the immigration authority in Sakharova. You know, I think it's like uh, 50 kilometers away from Moscow here. And do you, so, um, do you, um, um, what's the word? Can I quickly, to... sorry, can I quickly run through the process? You yeah, know, I'm sure. almost at the end here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So after, after submitting this, your, doc, your application down to the immigration, uh, it will take them like, once they accept it, once they accept the documents, and give you a SPRAV card, a reference card, that's okay, we've accepted your documents. It will take them like four months to review it and issue your PR to you, the permanent residence permit. Yeah. How about the same TRP? Thing, same thing. The same thing applied to TRP too. Yeah. Four months, four months to review it. But once they once they accept it, four months. And if, mm -hmm. if they are not going to uh, um, give you the, the document, maybe you have some mistakes in your documents document, or maybe you have some name error, which is very common to the to foreigners here, uh, they will not accept it. Mm -hmm. But the moment they accept it, definitely there is uh, uh, 95%, no, 98% guaranteed that you're you going to have it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what I wanted to ask you then, you know, you we mentioned Moscow, like Sak, whatever that place is. So I'm saying, yeah. like, how can um people that are not in Moscow can they work? Mm -hmm. Can they get help from breeding international? Yes, yes, they can get help from us. Um, it is either they come to Moscow to you know process their documents, or we help them from distance, you know, or we send. Our lawyer to city. them, yeah. Our lawyer to them in that, in that their city to help them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can really help anybody. So far, mm -hmm. you are in Russia, anywhere in the world, Vavshe, we can okay. help. Yeah. So if you are coming from Nigeria or like any country actually right now, okay. Um, how? What are the possibilities of a? What's the word? Coming legally, basically. I know there are lots of people that end up having to come, you know, through. You know some hanky panky ways, but I think that if people know how they can get through, like legally, so you can also work with people like that. Well, uh, if you want to come from Nigeria now or mm -hmm. anywhere from Africa, we can help. Okay, we can help. Uh, it depends on what you are coming here to do. Okay, but the most, um, the, 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 the very best way to come to Russia now is through students, Mr. Students. yeah. And we can help because we also partner with some, you know, universities. All right. Yeah, that can help us out. So. Okay. okay. So someone asks, could you pl could your place of residence be your school hostel? You know, you mentioned that you need a place to be permanently registered upon your <laughs> upon the issuance of your documents. Yeah, yeah. So um. Basically, the immigration inspector we consider this thing if you are using hostel for registration. Firstly, they will consider your contract with that school. And they if you're on scholarship, confirm. yeah, they need to, of course, even if you're on scholarship, you okay. must have a contract with them. Okay, okay. You know, yeah. when you say contracts, you know, we call people that pay contract students. <laughs> no, there are some contracts that don't involve money, yeah, just an yeah. agreement, yeah. yeah. So, um, they will, they will have to review your contract with them mm -hmm. and also confirm that you are still a student there. Mm -hmm. So the registration will be issued um, according to the time frame of study in that school. Okay, okay. Maybe if you, if, if you still have like three more years to study in that school now, mm -hmm. they will give you three years. But, but uh -huh. in some cases, you know, in Russia, the immigration uh, laws is not really stable. Yeah, and, it changes yeah, often. Yeah, and it varies from city by city. So, uh, 
some inspectors might not even allow you to use you students know, university you. yeah or hostel so they would prefer that you use maybe apartments or preferably if you are the owner of the apartment that would be the mm -hmm. best yeah so, so using student hostel it's not it's 50 50 50 50 okay. yeah so like how do you go about the um the I was about getting a registration. Does Braden have that and like you know offer that as a service as well? I mean, like how to get your um re permanent um registration after you've obtained your um document? Um, well, it depends on which is it registration for this PR and TRP? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about for PR TRP. Of course, if if you have a place where you can be registered, we can help you get it. Okay, okay. Yeah, because whatever we do in breeding consulting is to absolutely legal, and we don't offer a legal service. Maybe okay. trying to buy a place for you, no. Mm -hmm. But if you have a place where you can be registered, we can help you, you know, to execute the registration and give it to you. All right. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let me check the other questions that I have. Please feel free to ask questions in the comment section, okay? I can see some people asking questions here, like, could your place of residence be your school? Okay, you? Okay, okay. Sorry, is it your phone that is ringing? Not mine. I don't have any phone ringing here. Um, yeah. Okay. One second. Somebody okay, is asking, so okay. Next question Who can you know get a permanent residence permit? Okay, uh, having this permanent residence permit, which is VIT Nagi Testival, yeah, uh, it depends, everybody can have it, but it depends on the legal ground. Firstly, let's start with the majority of our viewers here, maybe most of them are yes. students, yeah. So, if you're a student and you have a red diploma you are eligible to have the VNJ, the permanent residence permits. Mm -hmm. um, another one is if you have a child in Russia. Oh, okay. Yeah, like if you have a marriage and you have a child, even if you don't have a marriage, but you have a child with a Russian citizen. So you are eligible, you're, through you, that's your child, you can apply. Even if you're not married to the person. Yeah, even if you're not married, but it would be very much better, better. if you're married, yeah. If you're married, but in some cases, you know, side beds do her call without marriage. Yeah. So if you are, if you have a Russian kid, if you have the status of HQS, highly qualified specialist, if you have a red diploma, um, what what other ways? If you are uh, officially employed in Russia and you have been working for over six months, but really? yeah, it depends yeah. on which profession. Okay. There are a list of professions that are, you know, allowed to get it. The the, the most popular one is uh, being an English teacher. Really? Yeah, yeah. Mm. If you're officially employed in Russia as an English teacher and you've been working for over six months and mm -hmm. your employer is fully registered and accredited, good, you can apply for this residence permit. Permanent Based one. on that. Yeah, yeah. If you're an engineer, there are over 135 professions that are allowed you know the engineers doctors um a lot a lot of them i can just ask questions then i will send you the list of the professions mm -hmm. yeah but please take notes people that works in burger king kfc you know or car wash they are not <laughs> no. yeah they are not allowed because they are not recognized profession in the law yeah, but if you oh. officially if you are officially employed i mean you you sign an agreement with your employer Regardless then, of the agreement, so let's say, let, I'm sorry to cut you, let's say, for example, let's say your agreement is a wage, right? So like on an hourly basis, that's how you work with your employer. But on yeah. their record, you are registered, sorry, you are on contract as it is a tutor rather under them. Do you also qualify? Well, uh, the government, the immigration authority will not really look into that. Mm -hmm. You know, what they want to see is if you are officially employed, Okay. Like you have a contract with them, you know, and there is this thing we call workbook. Okay. Yeah, you must also have it. If you're officially employed in Russia, you must have your workbook. They call it Trudovaya Kinichka. You should also have that. 
So uh, you said if somebody is employed as a teacher, but yes. working as you know many artist, many right? people, many people like students. Okay, like they yeah. do like um um they work wagely. So when I say they work on wages, so like hourly. So let's say like they pay them per hour. It doesn't matter. Is it does well, it have to be a full time job as an English tutor? That's the question. Well, according to the law, there are payments. Payment structures are actually recognized through maybe wages or salary. Okay. Which means monthly or weekly or maybe hourly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does not matter. Your okay. payments does not really matter. Okay. The most important thing is you must have a contract and your employer must be paying tax. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you see, I laughed because I'm just yeah. like... Do, no, do, okay, noted. Uh, the way I'm saying it, it might be... It, it sounds very easy, but the process is not really easy. Yeah. You know, if you come to us now, we have to talk to your employer, then help your employer to obtain some license now. Mm. It's actually, we can do it, you understand, to get some license to, you know, make you apply for that HQS. Mm -hmm. So that, I'm um, sorry, the residence payment. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so that's how it works. All right. Your payment structure does not matter. All right. What matters is you're officially employed. Thank you. That was very yeah. insightful. Yeah. So the next, um, I just want us to go over like the major things you've talked about <clears throat> you can obtain now. So what yeah. documents, you know, is required? Uh, required so documents. For, for which one? The permanent residence payment, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, like I explained earlier, uh, it's still the same document for TRP, but mm -hmm. it depends on which grant are you applying for it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you're applying through your profession now, like you've been working for over six months. Mm -hmm. If you're applying through your profession, we need your, you know, contract. Okay. Um, also, your employer too must have some ID, which okay. we are going to help your employer to obtain. And mm -hmm. another one is that police clearance certificate mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. Fully notarized, uh, translated and notarized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Russia here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your medical test reports, the HIV, the narcotics, uh, uh, the diseases that you, you don't have any infection in your body, you know, and your notarized passports, uh, certificate of non-criminal record, which I've mentioned earlier. So these are the most important documents. So if you're applying through your child, maybe your child is a Russian citizen, you will need this thing. By birth. birth. Yeah. You will need the birth certificate. Birth certificate. If you are married, you provide your marriage certificate. And uh, re registration too. They call that registration um, Spravka Norvosim. You know, the registration that shows that you are the father and you're all living together as a family okay. in the region. Yeah. Another one is Sweden Testival Assosteval, like the certificate of paternity okay. that proves that you are the father. Your name can either be mentioned in the birth certificate or in this certificate of paternity. Okay. Yeah. So the list of the documents depends on which ground are you applying through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But the most common one that applies to any ground is the police clearance certificate mm -hmm. your, and your medical test report and proof of funds in your account. I mean, your bank statement, which you must have over 200,000 rubles in your bank. Mm, okay. But take note, um, the more money you have, the, the more... better for you. The better for you, yeah. So, where do you apply for a permanent resident permit? And what are the difficulties you probably face doing that? Like you said, <laughs> it's not as easy as you are saying it. Yeah. So how to go about it? So, uh, the most common one is that if you check it out now today in Russia, you will see like so many people, they have these legal grounds and they still don't have the document. Okay. So the assignment of these immigration officers in Zakharova is not to give you at all. You know, they want to <laughs> share. Yeah. You see, they want to review your document and see that and see just to find one mistake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from it that no this is not correct this is not correct this time should be on top this one should be at the back you know all those little little errors they want to bring it out and decline your application at that moment so that's why it is very important for you to you know have professionals 
to handle your documents. We have so, se several cases of, let's like, there used to be a Nigerian living in Russia here for over 11 years mm -hmm. with kids, and he tried to apply several times. They declined him. They have been declining him every time, every mm -hmm. time. So the moment this guy came to our office, he, he, he was saying like, oh, they are going to reject it. We assured him that, no, they won't reject you. Mm -hmm. Well, well, on the first day of submission, they rejected this application. So, they've so seen the now, name and they're like, yeah. So <laughs> the, the, this is where a law firm comes in. Okay. We now we now apply through court. Like we be we actually solve the situation through court order. Okay. You know, yeah. So that's why it's very important that whatever you are doing, make sure that a lawyer or law firm is involved in it. Mm -hmm. So through the court decision. This guy, uh, this client actually submitted his documents and got they have said, Yeah, yeah, there are so many other cases like that, but I don't think we really have much time to review cases now. Yeah, yeah. so whatever it is, so far you've come to breeding consulting and you have legal ground, you have what it takes, we can help you out. Okay, thank you. Okay, someone yeah. is asking to talk about police clearance certificates, translation, and legalization. I don't know. What that is about? You mentioned police reports, you know, something from it's, your home. It's also, yeah, yeah, it's also the police report. Yeah, the police clearance certificate that shows that you have no criminal record mm -hmm. in your home country and, and even in Russia too. So you can apply for that through your embassy. Oh, okay. Yeah, or you apply directly to the police department in your country. You know, you, uh, uh, there, there is this form you have to send to them, your biometrics. Okay. I mean, your fingerprint, you send yeah. it to them. Yeah, so that that is what they are going to use to process this certificate and send it down to you here in Russia. So the moment you receive it here in Russia, take it to your embassy. Your embassy will change it to a certificate for you. Mm -hmm. Because this document will, for, will come in form of booklets mm -hmm. from your country. Mm -hmm. The moment you have it, take it to your embassy, they will change it to a very thick certificate for you then after having it from your embassy you, you take it to the ministry of foreign affairs for certification so they will put their stamp on it to certify that yes this is legit and uh you you truly don't have any criminal record so that's it okay someone is asking you know um we've talked about um the needing a lawyer and why you need a law firm so she's asking what's the role of a lawyer in this like she's asking for clarification how breeding mm -hmm. you know consultancy comes in you know what's the well firstly uh good filing you need professionals to file your documents mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like as like i said earlier uh the immigration authority they don't want to give you these documents so if you have your documents complete, your files are complete, and they still reject you, a good lawyer can apply mm -hmm. through court mm -hmm. for you, and they will, they will have no other reason to accept it. And another thing is, if you go there in person, like just by yourself, without a lawyer beside you, they will not really give you the full recognition that you need, the you full need attention. Yeah. Sometimes maybe the inspector is tired or according to his own emotion, he might try to play on your right. Yeah. You know, so when such infringements want, want to happen, you have a lawyer beside you, you know, to tackle that. And another thing is most of these foreigners don't really understand Russian language. That's a major yeah. one. I was waiting and for you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> there is no there is no how long you've lived in Russia. You can really never understand this language perfectly. Especially documentation. When it comes to documentation, sometimes you might be forced to sign some documents you are not supposed to sign. Yeah. There is a case like that also, a client that signed some, mm. you know, erroneous documents and he was declined because he signed a wrong document. So when you have a professional, I mean a lawyer, a jurist with yes. you, such person will guide you through all the process and tell you what to do and what not to do. Thank you. That was that was really insightful. Okay, yeah. so I know there is this issue of deportation. Okay, so many people they either find out that maybe their visa expired with them, mm -hmm. maybe they probably came here illegally and they are trying to legalize their status. You know, how can that be resolved? Okay, 
uh, you know, before there used to be presidential decree. Mm-hmm. You know, during this pandemic, the presidential the president issued a decree yeah. that allowed all foreigners to legalize their status. Yeah. If you if you actually if you've checked our pages too, you will see some of the videos there. We are talking about legalization, but the unfortunate situation is that this thing was only valid till 30th of September. Yeah. So from the 1st of October, anybody that uh, that, that 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 is illegal in Russia now. Is, is thrown for deportation, yeah. But we can uh, legalize the status if you have these grounds. Firstly, if you have what you are doing in Russia legally, for instance, if you have a business, but the most important one is if you're married in Russia, we can get you a court order without deportation. Uh, second one is if you maybe have a child, a child in Russia here, we can also help you get court decision without deportation. Mm-hmm. But if you have none of this grant, like if you don't have any of this grant, we can still also help you, you know, as a law firm, we can help you create some reasonable grants before the courts and present it to the courts for the judge to consider. Mm-hmm. So it is possible for us to legalize the status in Russia. We can still do it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So... um. We are running out of time. What's the last question I, I want to ask? Yes, I know many people are, like you said, many of us can start from TRP, okay, through the quota. Mm-hmm. So, like, how do you go about that? How do you get temporary residency through quota? Okay. You see, quota, quota, temporary residence permits, they are kind of two different things. Okay. Yeah, quota is just like the gateway to having temporary residence permits. Okay, we we are going to file your application. Uh, uh, get your application, then send some letters to some necessary ministries in Russia here. Yeah. Your applications involve uh, the application for quota, which you can get from their website. Um, your registration, your visas, you know, to prove your uh, um, stay mm-hmm. in Russia so far, yeah. And if you have any other thing that you are doing in Russia, maybe maybe you have a business or you're married or anything, we can also add that to it. So we will submit it to either in Sakharova or to the nearest immigration department in your area where you're registered. So that is where they're going to consider your application for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And after these two weeks, your names will come out. If you're fortunate enough to have your name among the, you know, list, then you can now apply, then package your documents again for temporary residence permits. So when you have a quota, it shows that, okay, now you can apply for a temporary like residence permit. you have a space, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, they are trying to create a legal grant for you through that mm-hmm. quota because you can't obtain any of these documents without a reasonable grant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you very and much. If you want to, and if you want to do this quota too, it's quite very cheap. You can just contact us. We we'll help you out, okay? All right. Okay, so yeah, lastly, how exactly can people you know, get legal services through giving <coughs> consultancy? Oh, sorry, come again, please. I said, how can people, you know, like how can we work with bridging consultancy? So, like, what are the what's the process? Do we have a consultation? Are there service charges? Something, something, you know. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, firstly, if you are a client, you you have uh, a one-time free consultation. Okay. A one-time free consultation, and so that one-time free consultation, mm-hmm. you must be able to um, establish uh, a contract with us or establish a reasonable deal with us. You know, but if you are coming for second consultation without anything, it will be charged because okay. our lawyers are always busy. Our lawyers are always busy, so it won't be nice to just be talking, talking without action. But of course, you can help. We can work with you if you have the legal grant, and we can also help you establish a legal grant. Okay. Yeah. So the service and, fees, um, you get that after the consultation. I think what you're trying to say is that it's based on your situation, based on your exactly, situation. exactly. Talking about um, fees, I can't really talk about fees here because. I don't know the problem that the person is yeah. having, you know. Okay. So everything depends on your situation. Once we discuss it and we will outline the process for you, 
Mm-hmm. You don't pay to us at once. You pay according to the progress of your work. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Any more questions? And I'll be ending this soon. So uh, yes, you guys have heard from Daniel. Daniel really spoke a lot. Like this was so insightful. Sorry, I can see one question here. Okay. Okay. I'll, how do a Nigerian student get a job? And what jobs are available for Nigerian okay. students? Well, um, jobs are available everywhere. You just have to search. Okay. And if I can help you, uh, you can search, you can actually apply for jobs through Edhunter. Yes, the HH.ru, true. The HH.ru, dot uh, the profit dot true, uh, Yandes Rabota. You know, there are so many Avito. websites. Yeah, Avito. I actually have a video on my channel talking about this. Whoever is asking, please go to my channel. I have a video on how to make money as a student in Russia. Yeah. All so, these but, applications are there. Yeah, but the most important thing is if you know that you want to uh, you want to get a job so that you can obtain a temporary or permanent residence permit, mm. make sure the job is official. Mm. You know, and it must be among the authorized professions in Russia, like English teaching jobs or mm. engineering. Uh, being a doctor, IT, uh, IT, or just, but not as maybe Burger King worker or anything. No, even no, no. Wait, even if you have to work in Burger King, it must be official, and you must be in position of maybe a manager or uh-huh. or director, director. Not as a finance. cleaner. Not as a cleaner. No, no. So basically, does it? Make sure your job is official. Yeah. All right, guys. I think that we'll bring this to a close soon. We <coughs> don't have any more questions. So you've heard from Daniel, as I was saying earlier. Daniel has brought so much insight. I mean, you've answered many questions that I had personally. You've answered questions that people have, you know, on how to get their temporary residency, permanent residency, legalize your status, avoid deportation. And like you guys have heard, you are going to be giving a free consultation on that yeah. breeding consultancy. Like, just go over and Start with whatever legal grants you have, and then for your service fee, that would de- that would be um, that's determined, you know, based on the situation Progress. that you are and what <clears throat> you would like to get. So yes, guys, Braiding International has been nice enough to offer my audience, you guys, a ten percent discount off on the um, legal services that you like to get from them. So you can use my code Dressusala ten. I'm going to pin it here. Joyce Busola 10. Yeah, let me take note of that too. Joy, Joyce Busola 10, right? Yes, Joyce Busola 10. And you will get a 10%. Okay, I pin it. Yes. All right. And you get a 10% of your service charge. So thank you so much, Daniel. I look forward to having more conversations, answering more questions. And you guys, I'm going to save this video. So the replay is going to be available here. And I'm also going to upload it on my YouTube channel. If you have any more questions, just go directly to Breeding International. I'm going to leave their um, handle under this post after this video has been saved. So you can go directly to them and get all your immigration issues solved in Russia. All All right. right. All right, guys. Bye. Thanks for having me, Busola. Okay. Thank you, you, Daniel, for coming over. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.